Okay, I think it's recording, right? <laughs> so, this is, that is so tell me, how are you now, Tommy? Nice, thank you. I hope you too. <laughs> yeah, are you still in, um, like you're still in Switzerland, right? Yes, uh, Itigen, Bern. Oh, okay. I wanted to know, I'm very curious, because we met at the 50s rocket. Yep. Uh, and I wanted to know, how did you get into rockabilly? Because I feel like we were the youngest two people in this <laughs> Like, I remembered you, because, because I was like, there's, an, there's another young person here, I'm not the only one. Yeah, I was uh, on stage too, with the, uh, or on stage, Spanish boys are inviting all the people yeah, at the concert then. That's right. I, I was going into rockabilly because my parents are listening to it. I think the first thing I heard was from the hospital right to the home was rockabilly music. So I think that's really, and I was listening to it every time. And so there was the normal music, like a pop and the rap was famous or is famous. Mm -hmm. So that's rockabilly for me. So that's the reason why I why I'm into rockabilly. And when you were at the fifties rocket, did you already have in mind that project with Tommy Romero? Uh, yes, a bit, a bit. Yeah, the idea was here, but I was working with my old band, and then uh, some months later we we broke up together, and so I was doing my own stuff now with Tommy Romero. Nice. I wanted to know a bit more yeah, about that project, Tommy Romero. So you put the band together. Yes. How did you find these guys? Like, how come they also like rockabilly? Before I was working with, with my old band, I was searching some people to do real rock and roll stuff for some projects or for some special gigs. And there was a, I didn't find a guitar player. So I was asking Noah if he could do this stuff and to, to, can play and he said yeah sure and uh, but we don't we didn't play together and uh, at the moment and then we I broke up with my band and so I got to find new people then I was searching and I asked him again do you want to play in my band uh, for not just for one kick but for all time we I hope for all time and he said, yeah, sure, man, just tell me when and things like that. And then I said, okay, cool. And uh, do you know a bassist, a bass player? And he said, yeah, well, thank you. And can you ask Max if you want to play also in this band? And he said, yeah, I'm going to ask him. And some minutes later, he said also yes. And so I got my new stuff and I got my new group together. It was really easy and really fast to find these two guys because they're playing in I think two other projects together. Yeah I'm so glad because I feel like there's a, in Switzerland there's some kind of scene for this genre but it's very yeah. small right? The scene is small yes but you have a lot of bands that, that's a little bit the problem. Yeah it's it's hard to, to become um, gigs because you have a lot of bands and they also want to play gigs and so if you're not a, a real real rock and roll and rockabilly band it's real hard to find gigs in, in the scene that, that's a little bit the problem so Max is playing e-bass another country bass so that's hard to find real rockabilly gigs oh yeah you should apply for the next uh, Viva Las Vegas Thing. Oh yeah, <laughs> Why it would be cool to play, to play in the States, yeah. yeah. I don't know if uh, the States are open for, for next April because in yeah, case of uh, COVID-19. Yeah, I think they cancelled yeah. it for this year, they will do it next year. Yeah, but we will, we will see. I think you really should because honestly, I looked at the lineup mm -hmm. for 2020 and some of them, I mean, you guys are better musicians than some of the bands that they programmed. I don't, I don't know if you checked them out, but sometimes I'm like, really? <laughs> <laughs> so I think you, well, you've, got chance, you've got all your chances. I hope so, yeah, we have to try. 
Yeah. Can we talk a bit about the break the rules now? Perfect. <laughs> yes. So it's your first EP. Um, these are all original songs, right? No, is uh, no? there are three original Tommy Romero oh. songs and uh, two covers. Yeah, uh, Roost Rock is written from Mark Winchester. That's the bass player from Brian Setzer Orchestra, Brian Setzer 69 Compact Special, and many other Brian Setzer yeah. things. <laughs> and my one desire is uh, a Rick Nelson song originally. Yeah, and was covered in the 80s by the Stray Cats. That's nice. I liked my one desire. It was very, I don't know, it was really sweet. Yeah, it's a, it's a real soft song from the EP. All the others are a little bit uh, punchier and just more like rockabilly. Okay, so can we talk a bit about the song uh, Till Morning Comes? Because then I think this one you wrote, right? Yes, right. It's incredible. Like, <laughs> is it okay if I ask how old you are? I think everybody is like, oh, you're so young, how old are you? And I'm also one <laughs> of these people, but yeah, how, how, sorry? 21. 21, yeah. Yes. Incredible. So uh, Till the Morning Comes is a song that we wrote together in the band and it was inspired by uh, Ain't That Love and You Baby. It's an original song from Elvis Presley. And I heard it from Sam Sticky band, uh, Bastard Bandits. Sam Sticky Bandits. They played it also, but in an other version. And I liked that one. And oh. then I said, hey, I want to do a song like that, but a little bit better. So uh, I wrote it, we played it together, and now it's a little bit more pop, pop rock and roll. So it could be a song from the Beatles, I think, probably from the early Beatles, because the bridge is not that rockabilly, like the verse and the chorus. I mean, for me, as long as it sounds vaguely rockabilly, it's rockabilly. <laughs> <laughs> So this one for me is Rockabilly. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I think it's one, it's my favorite, uh, one of my favorites of the EP. That's perfect. That's perfect. It's also it's also one of the favorites uh, for us as the band. Uh, we like Till the Morning Comes and Crazy Little Lover. That's our these are two uh, our two favorites, and of course Roost Rock. We really like to play every time live. We work together with with a saxophone player. And it's called Manuel Schwab, and he play also in, in two other projects with the other two guys. So uh, I was, we can say they are a band, and they searched the singer and the drummer, and I was here, and not the other way, <laughs> like it really was. They're like a band, and I was the new I was the new one, and not there were the new ones in my band. Oh, okay. So it's kind of like, it's almost like you joined them. Yeah, right. Yeah. Nice. So, and they're okay with you, like, writing the songs and... Yeah, we're a good team together. Uh, I write the songs and the lyrics. And then I'm going to sing for them and tell them, like, how how I like to do it. And they're, ah, come on, Tommy, let's do this chord and we take these chords for the bridge and we're gonna take these chords for the chorus because it sounds a little bit more nasty or more bad or better or something else. And I said, okay, come on, let's try, we do it. And if it sounds great, we let it be. And if it's not that good, we change it till it's perfect. Nice. And how, how has been the general reception so far of the EP? Uh, positive. Everything is positive. Till now, I don't know what's coming up for the next time, but till now, everything is positive. I don't know if if they're gonna tell me it's cool, man, it's perfect, because they're friends, or if they really, or if they really like it. But the reason and uh, the resonance of the concerts are also good every time. They like it also friends of mine they don't like rock and roll or they don't know it really they came to a gig and say hey man that's real better than i thought and so i think we we we, we can do a great job with that uh, and we hope the ep is going a little bit more up for more streams or more more sellings and things like that we hope to become a little bit more famous with the ep 
how, how is your life now these days? Do you work or? Yeah, I could work. I was working in the kitchen and uh, yeah, in the in the kitchen, all other things were closed, so I can't play music. Also, I can't play music. I, we we rehearsed together. That was no problem, but uh, we can't play concerts, or yeah. we, we couldn't play concerts at this time. That was the problem. Yeah, but are you guys still hopeful for the future? How is the morale? We are looking a. Uh, positive to it, to the future. The gigs are coming a little bit more than two, two months ago. Awesome. And what can we expect from the band in the future? We wrote songs in this Corona time and uh, we hope to do an album, an LP, an LP, if I can spell it. But uh, that's far away in the future. But the songs are here, and we're gonna play them live now. When when we have a kick, so that's that's the next problem. The next kick is also in September. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah, and also it's it's far away. Yeah, but I'm looking forward. Yeah, we too. Thanks, Tommy. <laughs> no problem, Miriam. Thanks too. We're moving